I'm Travis with the T-Rice Pro Breakdown. If you didn't guess already, this is my board. Now, this board, this board goes way back. Me and this board, it's changed quite a bit since my very first board, but my first Pro model I had on Lib was essentially the predecessor several generations ago of this board. We've modified it, we've evolved it, but this board is, you know, I competed about every competition out there on this board, probably filmed 10 video parts on this board. This board is tried and true. The T-Rise Pro, this board was built for resort. It was built for park. It was built for backcountry kickers. This is a twin. However, I recommend riding it maybe an inch back. I usually never mount this board completely centered. So the couple key pieces to this board are the C2 base profile. And again, essentially, C2 is rocker between the feet, camber from the front foot to the nose, back foot to the tail. You know, why this is the, I think, optimum base profile is you have this pivot point, which is the rocker in the middle. It makes it way quicker edge to edge when turning. It also allows you to, in soft snow, be able to kind of break the plane so you don't have to be 90% on the back foot in POW. I've never had a board that stomps more like dead bolts without wheeling out or wanting to go over the front in, in soft snow. With, with the camber from the back foot to the tail, you know, this I like to think of as like my second knee. Uh, all of this spring and this leverage that you have with this camber dive into your tail, you know, this absorbs flat landings, this thing absorbs moguls, unforeseen objects. Perhaps there's a rogue ski in the middle of the slope. You just lean back, it just rolls right over it. This thing also is what gives you all the pop. This is why I don't like full rocker banana boards. As much as they're super fun, skatey, and shreddy, this is where the power is. Again, this is a twin. Because I like to set it back about an inch, inch and a half, I like to think of it as a directional twin. But this board's built to go both ways. She does not discriminate. Edge profile, I mean, it's all about the magnet traction. Magnet traction has evolved a lot over the years. Why magnet traction? You know, essentially, if you have a you know, sleek, consistent radial side cut, and you're deep in a carve, it can be a smooth and very enjoyable feeling. But the minute you hit a little bump, you know, it throws the whole edge off, is what I find. And being able to have these pressure points, which is essentially what magnet traction is, I mean, same idea as like a bread knife, right? It cuts through things a lot easier, like a hockey skate versus a figure skate. Figure skates, you know, long and straight, hockey skate, you know, it's got a bevel. It's quick, it's agile, maneuverable. Like being able to do a hockey stop, you get so much pressure point on such a small surface area, it's the same idea. Being able to stop fast and carve deep, it, that's why magnet traction is the shit. That's why many people from other snowboard brands like to use this with our permission because it is just a better edge. Everything in design is about compromise. But when you weigh the pros and cons of magnet traction, like it just, above and beyond magnet traction, I think wins every time. Now, before getting off these beautiful, burr-free, Tori Hanzo inlaid steel edges, I will throw out one quick pro tip that I personally, for this board specifically, not all the boards I ride, but for this board specifically, um, you know, when you talk about effective edge, right? Effective edge is when this board is in a carve or when you look at it, it's essentially the whole radial side cut of the board. Now, the minute that that radial side cut ends and goes into, you know, the nose, that's the end of your effective edge. Now, I like to detune about an inch and a half on either side of the end of the effective edge. And I, I think this board just rides a little bit better with a detone. You know, I, I essentially spend my winters on a quiver. Like, I, I ride a lot of different boards. However, if I had to choose one board, if I only had one board to ride all season, this would definitely be it. I wanted to touch real quick just on waist width, foot size, and the board sizes I ride. I'm 5'11", 190. I got size 11 feet. I generally ride 
Like if I'm riding just park, want a little bit shorter board, so I'm usually riding like a 157. The waist width on that is about 25.8. Now it also comes in a wide version, which I think takes you up to 26.3, but you know, you start to get compromised like size 12 boots, I would say. That's when you can switch over to like the wide variant because face it, some people got big feet. What you compromise in a wide versus not is just you know, kind of how quick it is edge to edge and a little bit a little bit more mass and weight that it has. You know, all mountain resort or like backcountry kicker, I'll ride 161, size uh, 161 in this. And like that has, uh, I think, waist width of 26. And the beauty of this board is it comes in majority of the sizes, it has a wide option. You don't like toe drag, and you like to carve, and you want to make deep carves. Like, I would say compromise a little bit of the weight and go for the wide, because toe and heel drag are a real thing, and they will loop you out on the ass on hard pack snow. This board comes in a huge range. You can kind of dial in your needs with, this, with all the options you have for this board. For the graphics, which, you know, the art and what an artist imbues into this, the snowboard, something which I'm proud to be part of, like a legacy that LibTech and Mervin Manufacturing for decades have, have put so much energy into the graphics themselves. A friend of mine, Scof, who I've been a fan of his artwork for years, known him, been to his shows, seen amazing things he's done with friends. This was finally the year to collaborate. And so for the T-Rice Pro and inevitably the T-Ripper, we worked on this incredible graphic, which I'm gonna post a separate photo of the actual art piece and just you wait. But essentially, you know, the process of collaborating with an artist, many conversations, many emails, hopefully with Scof a pint. I think that this graphic centered around the benevolent and unseen support that humanity receives on a daily in its strive towards improvement, betterment, evolution of a higher conscious existence where we are able to treat each other, treat ourselves and treat the world around us with higher regards. This is where we're headed. And so we did a fun graphic around that. You can kind of break it down and see what you see. Just remembered that the three fingers has been a theme for several years now. We do one, one alien board a year here, LibTech. I literally got this several times spinning in frame last year, and it's just a damn good looking board, if I don't say so myself. Scof, you nailed it. The whole team, which it's a whole team that actually ends up doing, you know, the sublimation, you know, getting just these graphics right, the colors on point. You know, I want to point out to the entirety of the team that actually builds these boards. I mean, one of the beauty of these boards is the manufacturing process, how they're made. I'm in Seattle right now, you know, long time home of Liberace Technologies. We're actually headed out this weekend to the factory out in uh, Squim, close to Port Angeles, Washington. And I think the evolution of how these boards have been made recycled components, the efficiencies, low VOC, the, you know, taking toxicity out of the board making manufacturing process. It's really incredible what Mervin has done over the years to become the number one eco-friendly board builder on the planet. Hats off to such an incredible board. For those who are riding the T-Rise Pro, you're gonna love it.